So our section 3.3 is due, the homework for this is due not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. So we're going to cover it today. Uh, probably, yeah, because we'll, we'll probably get to work on it early next week. So, inverse of matrices. Uh, the formal definition for an inverse is that if you multiply a matrix with its inverse, then you're going to get the identity. Seems uh, pretty straightforward. The definition actually includes multiplying the inverse or multiplying the matrix by its inverse on both sides because of the fact that um, matrix multiplication is not commutative. We have to make sure that is is going to work for both sides <coughs> and uh, we at this point we're looking at square matrices A and inverse of square matrices so this is the formal definition for an inverse <coughs> no this is new So the, the negative one power is not our assumed uh, negative one, like putting it into the, the denominator, because that doesn't make sense for matrices. You can't, you can't have a matrix um, A, B, C, D, and, and assume that you're going to divide it by one. Yeah, kind of. It's like the arc sign. Um, the the thing with the negative one power is that it, it, it's it's kind of abused as a as a notation for the reciprocal. Uh, that's how we look at it in math. Um, <clears throat> but in a lot of math places, the negative one power is is defined as an inverse, which is a reciprocal if you're talking about multiplication. But if you're talking about anything else like trig or anything else like that, or in this case like matrices, the negative one power as a reciprocal doesn't make sense because you can't take the reciprocal of a matrix. So yeah, I think that's a good analogy. This is not true. Just like uh, like sine inverse of x is not equal to 1 over sine x. So it's the same kind of business and we want to treat this inverse as um, you know it's a multiplicative inverse but it's not the reciprocal because this does not make sense. Yeah, question. So the, the A kind of prime is the same thing? The A is a negative one? Uh, some, is that, that's not what they use in the book, is it? No, the A prime is the same. Is MATLAB oh, prime. yeah, so, uh, no, MATLAB uses prime for transpose. So inverse. Yeah, but that's, you know, usually by hand, but it's MATLAB. Oh, sorry, I didn't notice that. Uh, I guess I'm just trying to figure out what you <laughs> yeah, so let, let's just call that negative one. Okay. Which actually I didn't catch that. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, this should be a negative one. I don't know why it says prime. Okay, so what's your real question? Yeah, so I guess it's like kind of in the lab problem for the last section, we did like the conditions for commutativity. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming here that so it, the two have to be commutative. Yeah. You'd have to technically check both sides. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> technically, you should. I think somewhere along the line, it's proven that if it works for one way, then it's going to work for the other way. 
but maybe I'm not sure about that. My question is, don't you just run that test conditions under which, and if it's the case, you will need to do it? Yeah, yeah. Because it's going to equal the identity, right? Uh, <coughs> Let's just tentatively say, <laughs> if it works on one side, it'll probably work on the other side until I figure it out for reals. <clears throat> okay, uh, the first the first theorem associated with the matrix or with the with the inverse of a matrix is uh, is saying that if you have an inverse, then it, it is unique. So let's let's take a look at. Let me just not take a look at it. Let's just copy it. Whoops. <clears throat> if A is invertible, then th its inverse is unique. So in math, when you want to prove that something's unique, you assume that there's two different things that work for it. And then somewhere along the line, you're going to get a contradiction because they're supposed to be equal to each other. So I don't know. We should try to prove this. Let's try. We're getting in, uh, into all these proofs, huh? <laughs> Which is... <laughs> well, actually, there, there was uh, some math majors last time I taught this class and I didn't prove a thing and then and then this math major went to transfer it over and and started to take upper division courses where he had to prove all kinds of things and he said how come we never did that in linear algebra I said I don't know <laughs> <laughs> and, and <laughs> Yeah, well, a lot of classes are all proofs in upper division math. But also, I had to rewrite the course outline for this class, and the course outline said that we were supposed to be proving things. So just to be consistent with the course outline, let's... let's. Well, it's not going to be a waste of time because you guys, you guys are going to get tested on it, so you should know how to prove some things. All right, let's assume that uh, our proof is by contradiction. So, so we've proven something by deduction, we've proved something by induction, and then we're proving something by contradiction. So I think we've kind of rounded off our gamut of uh, styles of proofs. I think that's good. And we'll do a few more of these types of proofs as we go along. Uh, proof by contradiction is assuming that the conclusion, in this case the conclusion here, is unique. Uh, the inverse is unique. What we're going to do is assume that it, the conclusion is false. Assume that B and C are inverses where they are not equal to each other. So we're assuming that we have two different inverses that work for this. So what does it mean to be an inverse? That means that um, A times B is equal to I. Uh, B times A is equal to I. Right? That's assuming that B is an inverse. And then if C was an inverse, then A times C is equal to the identity also, and uh, C times A is equal to identity. <clears throat> so it's not 
We're assuming that it's not. We're, this is this is the assumption right here. This is this is the. And they're different, so that 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 is the opposite of saying that they're unique. Okay. Let's see. I wanted to write everything down so I could take a good look at this. Um, so let's take, they're all equal to I, so they can be all equal to each other. So let's see if we can set them equal to each other. Let's see if I can set these two equal to each other. That means that AB is equal to AC. Uh, that means also that BA is equal to CA. <coughs> So if if uh, if A B is equal to A C, then uh, that basically means that B is equal to C, right? <laughs> That's what I'd like to say. Multiply on the left by something. Multiply on the left by something. Say it again. Well, so we have to be careful about using the word divide. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, we can still use it, yeah. So let's multiply the left side by the inverse. We're, we're assuming here that uh, the inverse does exist, by the way. So let's assume, by the, uh, let's assume that the inverse exists, and let's multiply both sides by, let's actually state down what we're going to write. Multiply by A inverse that we know that exists. So A inverse... A, B is equal to A inverse A, C. And we know that these are inverses of each other, so they should be the identity matrix. And since identity matrix is the multiplicative identity, and that's any matrix times the identity is itself, and we've got B is equal to C. So here we have a contradiction. And then the same way over here, we can uh, multiply by the inverse again. This time on the right side, B A A inverse equals C A A inverse. And then we get the same deal and here's another contradiction by the way instead of writing out the word contradiction sometimes we use a symbol <laughs> two arrows going against each other that's contradiction <coughs> so because this, uh, because we assumed the opposite of what's true, we went through the proof and we got a contradiction, then that must mean that the original statement was true. And so that's the proof. And so... The opposite of the assumption must be true. So, uh, B must equal to C, and the inverse is unique. Okay? Yeah? Say it again? Uh, I would look through the book and look at the examples of proofs that they have. So when they have a theorem, they prove it. They prove parts of it, uh, like especially the ones where you know, it has multiple parts. They would prove uh, some of that. 
and then leave the rest as exercises to prove. So I would just look over the ones that they prove. And if you want to be ambitious about it, you can try to prove the other ones that they don't and see if you can do it. Yeah? Um, maybe. <clears throat> okay. So that's, um, that's our first uh, theorem of, uh, uh, about, about inverses, uh, that inverses are unique. So there can only be one. <clears> okay. <throat> There's another theorem. If A is an n by n matrix, then the system of linear equations given by uh, A x is equal to B has a unique solution, and the solution is equal to that. So remember, if we have a system of linear equations, let's see, let's think of an easy system of linear equations. Is there such thing? <laughs> an easy system of linear equations? There it is. Let's, let's see. Um, 3x plus 5y equals 7 and 2x minus y equals 4. <laughs> oh boy. <coughs> I want to use Mathematica for this, by the way, so I don't have to mess around with it too much. Um, <coughs> we know that this is going to translate into, uh, uh, into matrix form, and it's actually going to look like this. Well, we think about the augmented matrix, right? So we can think about the augmented matrix as uh, 3, 5, 7, 2, negative 1, 4. And then we can try to find a solution that way. But we can also look at it a slightly different way. And I don't know if we really got into this too much last time. But uh, we could take a look at the matrix of coefficients. Um, <clears throat> And we kind of started to do matrix multiplication, so we know what it is to uh, apply a matrix with another matrix or apply a matrix to a vector. And if we, if we write our vector x, y, wait, why is that for? This is a five, right? Uh, 3, 5, 2, negative 1. <coughs> and uh, we can set this equal to 7, 4. Then if we do the matrix multiplication when we do the row and the column business, we got 3x plus 5y is equal to the top one, 7, and 2x minus 1y is equal to 4. And that's exactly what the system was. And so we can think of, it, think of this as A, a matrix A. We can think of this as a vector uh, X. It's a vector, so it would be X, Y, or X, Y, Z if it's, we're in 3D. And then our, our uh, output, our, our thing on the other side is the vector, vector B. Vector V, vector B. <laughs> so we have an equation in vector form with the matrix involved. And it turns out that we can actually solve for this. So uh, if there's a way that we can find the inverse of A, so A is equal to 3, 5, 2, minus 1. And if there's any way we can find the inverse of this, then we can easily solve for this equation by, um, and by solving for this equation, we're solving for the vector x. So x, y is going to be equal to whatever the matrix uh, A inverse is times the vector V, vector B, Ve vector. 
<laughs> Vector B. <clears throat> so now the question is, uh, can we find this, this inverse? Um, yes. <laughs> so maybe we'll come back to this problem, but this is, this is what the theorem is saying. So let's, uh, let's, let's take a look at a two by two matrix. Let's start with, you know, when we find, uh, when we find things, we usually like to start with the smallest, uh, <coughs> smallest dimension and then work out, work our way out. Um, There, there will be for us. There will be several ways to find uh, inverses, but for two by twos, two by twos are a special case, and we actually have a nice formula for that. And to to take advantage or to be able to use that nice formula, we need one more definition, and that is called a determinant. So let's define this, and then let's find the uh, the inverse of a two by two matrix, and then we'll talk about uh, trying to generalize it. So the definition of a determinant, a determinant of a two by two matrix is going to be basically the product of the diagonals minus the product of what we call the wings for a two by two matrix. You guys heard that wings? Yeah. Okay, so it's not just no, no for matrices. <laughs> I don't know if I if I just made. I mean, I just, did I just make it up? All right. Well, the diagonal and the wings. Um, so we'll call them the wings. So the determinant is. Uh, um, it's important to note that the determinant is a scalar, right? A, B, C, D are scalars, and so the computation, uh, multiplication, and subtraction will result in a scalar. <coughs> and it turns out that the inverse of a two by two matrix is related to this determinant. So stated as a theorem, the inverse <coughs> the inverse uh, of this is going to be the reciprocal of the determinant, one over the determinant times, and here you switch the diagonals and negative the wings. Now that we know diagonals and wings are, right? No. <laughs> the diagonal goes down in the diagonal and the wings <laughs> man I don't know okay um, I suppose it's a little shorter to write debt A. <laughs> all right, so as long as the determinant's not equal to zero, we're all good. We can find the inverse of a two by two matrix. Okay? Now, uh, this is a theorem which, which probably means we should try to prove it or think about proving it, or let's just say that we did. Uh, actually, we can prove it. This is easy enough to prove. Let's see. <clears throat> uh, let's prove this, and we'll prove this directly. So we're saying that the inverse of A is supposed to be 1 over the determinant times this thing. So let's see. Um, 
And by definition, the inverse has to be defined both being multiplied from the left and from the right. So we'll do one way, and then we'll, I'll put dot, dot, dot for the other way. <clears throat> and since we know a specific value for A, and that would be the matrix A, B, C, D, we're going to multiply that by A inverse, which is a scalar. Uh, the determinant of A is a scalar, so 1 over the determinant of A is a scalar. And then this is being multiplied by D minus B minus C A. And I don't know if you guys remember those properties where were matrix multiplication properties where if you had a scalar involved, you can actually move that scalar out and then focus on the, just the matrices. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to move the scalar out, and then we're going to focus on the matrices um, A, B, C, D times D minus B minus C, A. And then now let's multiply this out. So I have 1 over the determinant of A. At some point, we'll replace that with with uh, what it actually is equal to. Okay, so um, let's see. <laughs> AD, thanks. AD uh, minus BC. Um, negative AB uh, plus BA. Um, CD minus DC and uh, negative BC um, DC plus AD all right well uh, the wings wings are gone and uh, we have these things that look alike, and in fact, they look like the determinant of A. So I mean, we should have done this already, but uh, the determinant of A is AD minus BC, and then you got AD minus BC, 0, 0, and if I switch this, this is AD minus BC. And if we distribute the scalar, we're going to get uh, the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. So this is half of the proof. Let's see. That's uh, the determinant of A is ADBC. And then a scalar times a matrix is taking that scalar and multiplying it by each of the matrix. So this will be 1, and then this will be 1. No, they, they probably just kind of, they did it for a few of them and then figured out, oh, there's a pattern here. So so this is uh, half of the proof. So we're not quite QED yet. Maybe we're just QE. To get the other half of the proof, you would do the same multiplication, but on the other side. And I'll just put dot, dot, dot here. And then I'll say QED. Okay. It is very similar, but it's not exact. So, we should do it. All right. So now we know how to find the inverse of a two by two matrix. Which, let's go back to our previous problem. We have a matrix A that's uh, 3, 5, 2, negative 1. What's the inverse of that? <clears throat> so this is, sorry, what is it? Uh, 1 over negative 3 plus 10. 
Plus 10 or minus 10? Minus 10, right? <laughs> right? Times what? Negative 1. What else? Negative 5. negative 2 and positive 3. So you switch the diagonals and you keep the wings there but put a negative sign in front. Switch the diagonals, negative the wings. Alright, so this turns out to be, I guess we can turn this to negative uh, one-tenth, right? So so positive one tenth, uh, positive. Oh, <laughs> okay. Thirteen. Uh, positive five over thirteen. Uh, positive two over thirteen, and negative three over thirteen. So that is your. Um, that's your inverse. Okay, so according to this theorem, we now have to do one more thing to get the solution to this. Uh, to get the solution to this um, system of linear equations, our x value or x vector is going to be the inverse times your vector b, which is going to be 1 plus 20, 20 over 13, and 14 minus 12, 2 over 13. 27. Yep. <laughs> Minus four. It's fourteen. No, it's fourteen minus twelve, right? Yeah. I don't know. I'm 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 multiplying this. This is um. Uh, this is a inverse. This is b. And then I just multiplied it. Uh -huh. uh, no, you'll multiply the regular matrix multiplication. So uh, the top row and then the column gives you the top number. Oh. And then the bottom row, the column gives you the bottom number. <coughs> so this is supposed to be your x. And x is really x and y vector. So x is 27 thirteenth and y is 2 over 13. Yes, if the determinant is zero for a two by two matrix, then it's not invertible. Then you don't have the inverse. Yeah, and it doesn't work. So a two by two matrix, by the way, is a very special case. We don't have any other formulas for higher dimension matrices to find the inverse of them. And to find the inverse of other matrices that are of higher dimension, we're gonna have to use a, a, a process that's similar to the Jordan elimination, Gauss, Jordan, row, echelon stuff. <laughs> Whatever it's called. This one yes. with a two by two? Okay. All right. So let's take a look at a more general way. Um, here's some examples, but we don't need to do examples. We kind of did one along the way. <coughs> so let's. Uh, oh, they have more theorems. <coughs> let's do some examples where we have a. Uh, mm, 
That's not Hoffman. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Denise is doing it. She's just so loud. Actually, I'm loud too. All right. Uh, let's let's just look at these theorems, and uh, I don't know about proving them. For now, let's say, let's see. Uh, a is invertible. Then uh, A inverse is invertible. So the inverse of the inverse is back to the original matrix again. Um, <clears throat> If A is invertible and C is a non-zero scalar, then A times C is also invertible. So you want to take the inverse of the, the scalar, multiplicative inverse of the scalar, and multiply that by the inverse of the matrix. This is the tricky one. If A and B are invertible matrices of the same size, then A times B, the product, is also invertible. And the inverse of this is equal to, whoa, it's equal to B inverse and A inverse. That's kind of cool. What do you mean inverse? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so exponents for matrices at this point only work with positive integers. Okay. And zero, zero, a, a matrix to the zeroth power is technically equal to the identity matrix. But uh, uh, we're, we're not defining negative exponents for, for uh, matrices. And for that matter, we don't have any fraction null exponents either. <clears throat> All right, if A is invertible, then the, the transpose is also invertible. And it turns out that the inverse of the transpose is the transpose of the inverse. <laughs> and uh, if A is invertible, then A to the nth power is also invertible uh, for all non-negative integers n. And um, and the inverse of a power is the power of the inverse. Did you get the motor for um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. And we'll we'll try to see if we can find problems that would actually use these uh, theorems. Yeah, when you prove stuff, it turns to stick a little bit better. Uh, let's try proving, which one should we try to prove? Uh, e is induction. Um, let's, let's try to prove, let's try to prove uh, C. <coughs> so, We want to find the inverse of AB. Uh, well, they tell us uh, that the inverse of AB is supposed to be equal to this, right? So if remember the, the rule for the inverse, I'm going to use a different letter for this matrix, uh, that C, C inverse equals the identity, and C inverse C is equal to the identity. So we want to make sure that we get this from both sides. So this is our matrix AB, and let's show this is true for this inverse. By that, I mean, let's multiply by the inverse on the right side and let's see what happens. So according to uh, their statement, AB inverse is supposed to be B, oops. 
So AB is the first matrix, and AB inverse is supposed to be B inverse, A inverse. <coughs> well, um, if you remember, matrices are commutative. No, <laughs> there are what do you call it? Um, parentheses. What? No, associative. Matrices are associative in multiplication. So I can change the order that I want to how I want to compute this. So why don't we pair up the B and the B inverse first? And you think, wow, that's, uh, that's uh, what is it? What's B times B inverse? That's the identity matrix. And we know that anything times the identity matrix is back to anything again, so this is AA inverse. Oh, look, A times A inverse. What's that? That's the identity. So AB times AB inverse on the right side is equal to the identity matrix. So we've proven this part right here. So now all we have to do is prove the other side, prove the other part. Should I put dot, dot, dot here too? So AB inverse AB is equal to eventually equal to I also. Yeah? Um, because we turned well, there, A, B times the inverse of A, B, and you turn the inverse of A, B into the B inverse times A inverse. Right, which is what they're saying. So what we're essentially doing is we're not, we're not, uh, we're, we're proving their formula and saying, oh, that formula works. We're not, um, we're not, how should we say, we're not deriving our own formula. And you could have just left off that first term of the Wait, what equal sign? This one? The first one? You don't really have to say the thing at the beginning. You never use it up to this. Oh, this thing? Wait. Oh, this thing? Yeah. Okay. Um, Kind of, yeah, you, you kind of don't need that because I, but I'm kind of copying, I'm using this as a model to copy it. But it, yeah, you're right, it's not necessary. <coughs> okay, so we're done with this proof. Just proving all kinds of crap today, stuff today. So I think E is a, uh, because it's, it's an N working for non-negative integers, so whenever we deal with integers N, then this, that's a, a good a good time to use induction, and in fact I think that's a, an actual problem. Oh no, this is a, a finite product of things. Oh, this is a good one. Hmm. All right, maybe that would be a good quiz question or something. <laughs> okay. So we have, uh, we have a bunch of theorems that deal with inverses. We have a bunch of theorems that deal with the matrix algebra from addition, scalar multiplication, to uh, actual matrix multiplication. And in fact, we use a matrix multiplication property here in the associative associativity of multiplication for matrices. So um, we want to keep these theorems kind of um, handy and, and available to us. <coughs> and uh, that, that's how we're going to be able to continue to prove things in the future because that's how things are proven. You use things that are already there. Okay, so I was talking about the negative property and this is what Becca was asking earlier. I think I might have not answered her correctly. Um, about the negative power 
I think I said the negative power doesn't exist. So here we have a generalization. The negative power actually works as an inverse for matrices. So uh, the inverse of a product of invertible matrices is a product of their inverses in reverse order. That's actually, wait. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's actually that problem that I said was a good question to, to try to prove. So we won't prove this, but this is uh, what they're saying. Uh, if you take the product of these matrices, the inverse of that is equal to uh, the inverse or the product of the inverses. How should we say this? You could say this kind of nicely in words. The inverse of a product of matrices is, is equal to uh, the product of the inverses. Wait, that's this thing right here. But it's in reverse order. <clears throat> Just like, uh, you know, so we start off with that simple example, AB inverse is equal to B inverse a inverse and so we just assume that for three matrices and we'll see that the same thing's going to happen we do that for four matrices same thing's going to happen and so we do it by induction and we see that this is going to be true for any amount of matrices that we're multiplying together so the inverse of uh, it's related to the second one so if we take this very same statement over here in this problem and assume that they're all the same matrices instead of A1, A2, A3 being all different you say oh this is A and then this is A the same matrix and this is A the same matrix then that's what's going to happen so if we start from here A times A times A dot 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 and times According to um, this statement, this is equal to the product of the inverses in reverse order. So that's uh, A inverse times A inverse times dot 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 times A inverse. And that's just equal to A inverse of the nth power. <coughs> Which is how they're going to define the, the matrix raised to a negative integer power. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so that's just a generalization. I guess the best way to do this is to prove number 18. If you prove number 18, then all these other ones would just follow, and that doesn't need to be proven. So it would be more like a corollary if we prove number 18. Okay. Uh, elementary matrices. Now, before we do this, let's uh, let's show how to find a matrix of a of a larger matrix or inverse of a larger matrix. And um, for this, we should probably do an example, an actual example. 
I don't know. Let's, uh, is there a homework problem that has a three by three matrix where you need to find the inverse of? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I do have the answer to that. Look at that. Um, <clears throat> let's just let's just do an example here where I'm just gonna take this matrix. So let's take a look at a matrix like this and see how we can find the inverse of this. Aside from punching it in your calculator, um, let's see if we can find a good way to find a ma the, the identity matrix. So this is called, uh, what's it called, the Gauss-Jordan elimination? Maybe we should do this for the two by two first. Oh, well. All right, so remember when we had a system of linear equations and we had the augmented matrix and we add another column uh, and then we solve for it? So this is going to be going to be kind of similar, but instead of adding a column, what we're going to do is we're going to add more than just a column. What we're going to add is the actual identity matrix. Of whatever size you're looking for. So we have a three by three matrix, so we'll add the identity three by three matrix as the augment part. And what we'll do is we'll do the elementary row operations like we've done before, but we'll do it for all six numbers for each row. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to change this uh, original A matrix into the identity matrix. So the complete Gaussian elimination. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, for the first one, we'll take uh, a couple of steps here. One, six, minus one, one, zero, zero. And I will take the first row, multiply it by negative one. No, I'm not doing that problem for the homework. I'm, I'm just I'm doing a different problem. <clears throat> so I'm going to take the first row, multiply it by negative 1, add it to the second row, and replace the second row. So that this would be 0, this would be negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, this would be negative positive 1 plus 1 is 2, this would be negative 1, 1, 0. Okay? So now I'm going to also on the same step, I will take, uh, no, I'll do it one step at a time. Uh, maybe I should write smaller. This will be a long page. Okay, next step. Uh, let's take the first row multiply it by negative 1 and add it to the third row. I'm going to start writing a little bit smaller at a time here. <laughs> oh, I didn't need to do it one by one. So negative 1 times 6 is uh, negative 6, minus 1 is negative 7, uh, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, plus 0, negative 1, 
zero and one. <clears throat> so I probably should uh, multiply the second row by negative one fifth. Would that be would that be the good next step? Uh, one six negative one one zero zero um, zero one negative five halves. So oh, here comes the fractions. <laughs> negative two fifths. Uh, positive one fifth. Negative one fifth. Zero. And zero minus seven, one, negative one, zero, one. Uh, row, I would probably clear out row three. I would, uh, I'll start squeezing it in here. Multiply row two by positive seven. Seven row two added to row three. So I got one six minus one, one zero zero, zero one negative two fifths, one fifth, negative one fifth, zero. And then got rid of that. So I multiply this by 7, I get negative 14 fifths, negative 14 fifths plus 1, 9 fifths. And then uh, uh, 7 fifths minus 1, 2 fifths. Um, negative seven fifths and one. Okay, let's uh, wipe out this uh, nine fifths over here. So negative five over nine times row three replaces row three. So negative, uh, this is 5 ninths, negative 5 ninths, this becomes a positive 1. 5 ninths to 5 would cancel, negative 2 ninths. Um, 5 would cancel, negative, negative, that would be 7 ninths, and minus 5 ninths. Okay. All right, halfway there. <laughs> now let's uh, get rid of the, the numbers in the first place. I need to multiply the first, uh, the last row, row three, by negative five halves, and add it to row two. I'm going to go ahead and do two steps at once here. Then I'm going to multiply. I won't multiply by anything, I'll just add row 3 to row 1. So row 3 doesn't change. Let's see how this is going to change. You got 0, 1, multiply row 3 by, I have to multiply it by negative 5 halves. No. Multiply by positive five halves. By two fifths. Has to be two fifths, right? So 
multiply that by positive two-fifths. So when I multiply this by positive two-fifths, this would be positive two-fifths plus negative two-fifths. That's zero. All right, two-fifths it is. You got, uh, yeah, <laughs> minus two-ninths, two-fifths. plus one-fifth, negative four plus nine, negative four plus nine, negative four plus nine, five, <laughs> um, five over 45, which is one-ninth, boy that was hard. What? Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Um, two fifths and seven ninths minus one fifth. Uh, again, that's nine, so that's uh, fourteen minus nine is five. 5 over 45, that's also 1 ninth. And then 2 fifths times negative 5 ninths is negative 2 ninths. All right. Now if I take row 3 and just add it to row 1, I'm going to get zero for this element over here. And then now I just have to deal with this other stuff. So uh, two ninths uh, plus one minus two ninths, that's seven ninths. Seven ninths and minus five ninths. I got one more thing to get rid of there, the six. So what do we need to do to get rid of that 6? Multiply row 2 by negative 6 and add it to row 1. So the bottom two rows won't change. see how this is going to change. This is a 1, this is a 0. Uh, multiply the second row and then add, that's nothing. Multiply this by 6, we get uh, minus 6 over 9 plus 7 ninths. That's 1 ninth. Is that right? And then the same thing, right? One ninth again, and then six times two is twelve. Positive twelve ninths minus five ninths, seven ninths. <coughs> okay, so what's our big prize here? This uh, the identity matrix, or where it used to be the identity matrix, is the inverse. So what was the original matrix again? What is what? One, six. One, one, one. And what? Okay, so let's find the inverse of that. Now let's find the inverse of that and write it in matrix form. So we got one ninth, one ninth, seven ninths, one ninth, one ninth, negative two ninths. Whew, look at that. 
So this is your inverse. So, oops. So A inverse is equal to that. So that's how you would find uh, the inverse in uh, using the Gaussian uh, reduction. And what we're going to want to do is uh, we're going to want to take a look at the steps that we take to get to that inverse because those steps are also meaningful in, uh, in, uh, in our matrix algebra. They're called the elementary matrices, which is our next topic and still in the same section. All right, that should be enough. See you guys.